Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a A-level question from paper 3, variant 32, May-June 2020, question 1, based on cash flow statement. The question states that the statements of financial position of PPLC at 31st December were as follows. 2019 and 2018, non-current assets, plant and machinery was $344,250 and $225,000. Motor vehicles, $90,000 and $136,000. The total was $434,250 and $361,000. Current assets inventory was $34,650 and $44,600. Trade receivable $49,700 and $38,900. Cash and cash equivalent nil and $12,400. The total is for 2019 is $84,350 and for 2018 it is $95,900. And the total assets which is the total of non-current assets as well as the current assets when we add this we get the total assets for 2019 it is 518,600 dollars and for 2018 it is 456,900 dollars furthermore we have equity and liabilities equity ordinary share capital of one dollar share each three hundred thousand dollars and three hundred thousand dollars share premium is forty thousand and forty thousand dollars retained earning is sixty one thousand seven hundred dollars and eighty eight thousand two hundred dollars the total is four hundred one thousand seven hundred dollars for 2019 and four hundred and twenty eight thousand two hundred dollars for 2018 Non-current liabilities, we have bank loan which is 80,000 for 2019 and nil in 2018. Current liabilities, straight payables is $21,600 and $20,100. Other payables are $6,800 and $8,600. Bank overdraft is $8,500 and nil. The total is $36,900 for 2019 and $28,700 for 2018. Then the total equity and liabilities is $518,600 and $456,900 for 2018. Other payables included the following. Accrued expenses $1,100 and $3,400. Accrued interest is $2,600 and nil. Tax payable is $3,100 and $5,200. The total is $6,800 for 2019 and eight thousand six hundred dollars for 2018 the following information related to the year ended 31st december 2019 is also available a motor vehicle with a net book value of seven thousand dollars was sold for eight thousand three hundred dollars additional machines costing one hundred and eighty thousand dollars were purchased interest expenses of four thousand eight hundred dollars were incurred tax charges was $3,100 and interim dividend of 8 cents per share was paid in August 2019. In the A bit of the question, we are asked to state the usefulness of the statement of cash flow to the potential shareholders. You see, cash flow statement provides the details of cash inflows and cash outflows. Hence, it helps the shareholders to understand the cause of change in net cash flows. Additionally, it gives the details about the cash generated by a company from its operating activity. Hence, it helps the shareholders to recognize the ability of the business to generate cash from its trading activities. It also explains the financial sources the business uses for internal as well as external finances. Therefore, it shows the shareholders the source of internal finances and the ability of the business to raise cash from external sources. Additionally, it explains the shareholders about the liquidity of the company. It helps them to understand whether the company can generate enough cash to buy non-current assets like furnitures, fixtures or any plant and machinery required. Furthermore, whether the business will be able to pay the tax as well as dividend can be analyzed by using the cash flow statement. Moreover, cash flow statement is more easy to understand and comprehend when compared to the other financial statements. You see statements like income statement and finance, statement of financial position involves lot of accounting policies and lot of uh, accounting information which 
requires more knowledge to understand when compared to the cash flow statement which is more easily understood by the shareholders as it deals with the objective cash inflows and outflows in the organization hence it is more easy to understand so these are the various uses of cash flow statement for the shareholders in the bit of the question we are asked to calculate the profit from operation for the year ended 31st december 2019 you see we find the profit from the operation or the operating profit from the income statement when we have all the information as we don't have all the information available here we have the information related to the interest paid the tax paid as well as the retail earning on 31st december 2018 and the retail earning on 31st december 2019 so we have this information and we don't have all the information available hence for operating profit what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the operating profit in the reverse order that is when we make the income statement we get the operating profit after that what we will do we will subtract the financial expenses that is interest and tax we get the profit for the year this profit for the year is taken to the statement of equity where we will have the opening retail earning which will be the retail earning which is brought forward from the last financial year so this will be the retail earning which is brought forward from 31st december 2018 to this we add the profit for the year and we subtract the dividend paid we will get the closing retail earning or the retail earning on 31st december 2019 so we will start from here and we will proceed in the reverse order to get the profit from the operation or the operating profit and for this what we will do is whatever we add in the normal circumstances we will subtract it when we go for the reverse order and whatever is subtracted we will add it when we go for the calculation of operating profit in the reverse order now let's start calculating the operating profit in the reverse order we'll start from the retail earning on 31st december 2019 and uh, that is 61700 dollars and then we will subtract the opening retail earning which is the retail earning brought forward from 31st december 2018 which was given as 88200 dollars which will be subtracted and then we will add the dividend paid or the interim dividend here it is subtracted and in the reverse order it will be added and it was mentioned in the additional information that we are paying 8 cents per share for the dividend so we have 300000 shares so it will be 8 cents times 300000 shares which will be 24000 now when we take 61700 subtract 88200 and add 24000 we will get the loss for the year as 2500 so here instead of profit for the year it is the loss for the year now again as we are going in the reverse order we will add the financial expenses that is interest and tax so the tax charges which was mentioned in the additional information was 3100 and the interest paid which was mentioned in the additional information was 4800 so after adding and subtracting we will get the profit from operation or the operating profit as 5400 In the seabed of the question we are asked to prepare a reconciliation of the profit from the operation to the cash from operation or cash used in operation for the year ended 31st December 2019 so let's do all the calculations in the working notes before calculating the cash from operation first we will calculate the depreciation and when we have the incomplete information or if we are dealing with any question related to incomplete records what we do is we find the depreciation using the revaluation method of depreciation in revaluation method of depreciation what we will do is we take the opening valuation of non current assets to this we add the purchases of non current assets during the year we subtract the sales of non current assets during the year we subtract the closing evaluation of the non current asset and we will get the depreciation for the year so here we have the non current asset which is plant and machinery 
for this the opening evaluation or the opening value will be the value which we bring it forward from the last year that is the value of plant and machinery on 31st December 2018 which is brought forward at 1st January 2019 and this was mentioned in the statement of financial position as $225,000. To this what we will do is we add the additional machine which was purchased and it was mentioned in the adjustment as $180,000 and from there we will subtract the closing valuation that is the closing value of the plant and machinery which was mentioned in the statement of financial position at 31st December 2019 as $344,250. So once we add and subtract this that is when we take $225,000 to this we add $180,000 and subtract $344,250 we will get the depreciation for plant and machinery as $60,750. In the same way for motor vehicle, the opening valuation that is the value of motor vehicle at 31st December 2018 which is bought forward on 1st January 2019 is $136,000. From there we will subtract the sales of motor vehicle which was mentioned in the adjustment that is $7,000 and we subtract the closing valuation that is the closing value of motor vehicle which was mentioned in the statement of financial position at 31st December 2019 which was $90,000. So when we take $136,000 subtract $7,000 and $90,000 we will get the depreciation for motor vehicle as $39,000 and when we total up the depreciation for both the non-current assets that is we take the depreciation for motor vehicle which was $39,000 plus the depreciation for plant and machinery that is $60,700 we will get the total depreciation as $99,750. Before proceeding and doing the calculation let us first understand why we are doing all these calculations in our working notes. We are doing this so that we can find the cash from operation. For cash from operation what we do is we start with the profit from operation and this is the operating profit and when we calculate the operating profit we add and subtract all the expenses and gains even those which do not involve any actual inflow or outflow of cash and as we need to calculate the cash which is available in the business due to the operating activity hence we need to add and subtract based on the requirement so that we can calculate the actual cash which is generated from the operational activity. So here the item which is the non-cash item which do not lead to any cash outflow is the depreciation which we have calculated in the first working notes. Will depreciation lead to any cash outflow? No. Why? Because depreciation is the reduction in the value of non-current asset which is used in the production. As the value of non-current asset decreases because we have used this non-current asset in the production, what we do is we consider this as an expense based on the matching concept and subtract it as an expense to get the operating profit or the profit from operation. However, as this do not require any outflow of cash, therefore in order to find out the real cash generated from the operation, we need to add it back to the profit from the operation. Next we have loss on disposal of non-current assets. As we don't have this in this particular question, let's proceed first with the profit on the sales of non-current asset and then we will understand the loss on the disposal of non-current assets after doing the profit on the sales of non-current asset. For this we have here the profit on the sales of motor vehicle and here what we have done is we have taken the bank value which is the disposal value of $8,300 given in the additional information and the net book value for this motor vehicle was $7,000. Hence, we got the profit on the sales of motor vehicle as $1,300. In this, the actual cash inflow is this, that is $8,300, which we got by disposing of the motor vehicle. And this will be recorded in the investment activity and not in the operational activity. 
However, the amount which we are recording here as the profit on the sales of motor vehicle will not lead to any inflow of cash. This is a non-cash item and we have recorded it as a gain and added to the gross profit when we have calculated the operational profit and as there is no inflow of cash and we have added it as a gain now to get the cash from operation we will subtract the profit on the sales of non-current asset to find the actual cash generated from the operational activity now let us understand the loss on the disposal of non-current asset you see we use the same thing which we have used here that is instead of getting profit on the sales of motor vehicle let us suppose that we got loss on sales of motor vehicle for this we got the disposal value as six thousand dollars and our net book value is seven thousand dollars so the loss on the sales of motor vehicle will be one thousand dollar that is six thousand dollars minus seven thousand will be one thousand dollar which will be the loss on the sales of motor vehicle and based on the matching concept we subtract this from the cross profit to get the operational profit why do we subtract this as an expense because we have under depreciated our motor vehicle we thought when we sell the motor vehicle we'll get seven thousand dollars however when we actually sold the motor vehicle we got only six thousand dollars that means we have under depreciated the motor vehicle value and because of this there was loss on the sales of motor vehicle but will the loss on the sales or disposal of motor vehicle will lead to any cash outflow no it will not lead to any cash outflow hence we need to add this back to the profit from operations so that we can get the actual cash generated from the operational activity next we will see how the change in the working capital will affect our cash from operation first i have mentioned that we add the decrease in the current assets for this what we have in this question is the decrease in the inventory. Now, is inventory required when we calculate the operating profit? Yes, we require the inventory when we calculate the operating profit because this is a part of cost of sales and after subtracting the cost of sales from the sales revenue, we get the gross profit and from gross profit, we subtract the expenses to get the operating profit. Therefore, we require inventory and it is a part of the calculation for operating profit. Now, here it is mentioned the inventory on 31st December 2018 was $44,600 and the inventory on 31st December 2019 was $34,650. So here, there is a decrease of inventory of $9,950. Now, let's see how it will affect the cash from operation. You see, decrease in inventory means we have sold this inventory. As we have sold this inventory, the cash balance will increase. Hence, we add the decrease in the inventory or decrease in the current asset as it increases the cash balance in the organization. Next, what we have here is we add the increase in current liabilities now for this what we have here is increase in trade payables trade payables are the part of your credit purchases and naturally credit purchases is the part of the cost of sales so we require this or it is a part of calculating the operating profit now let's see how this has changed the trade payable on 31st December 2018 was $20,100 and the trade payable on 31st December 2019 was $21,600. That is, there is increase in trade payable of $1,500. Now, increase in trade payable means we have purchased more goods on credit and we have not paid the cash for this and there was no, not any cash outflows. However, we can sell these goods and as we have sold the goods, the cash balance in the organization will increase and as there is an increase in the cash balance, hence it is added. So, increase in the current liabilities that is increase in the trade payables here will be added as it increases the cash balance to calculate the cash from operation. 
Furthermore, I have subtracted the increase in the current assets. For this, what we have here is the increase in the trade receivables. Trade receivables are the part of your sales revenue and these are the credit sales. And credit sales, as we have taken it as a part of sales revenue, will increase our operating profit. However, there is no inflow of cash, so this needs to be rectified. And here if you see, the trade receivable on 31st December 2018 was $38,900 and the trade receivable on 31st December 2019 was $49,700. So there is an increase in the trade receivable by $10,800 and the trade receivable will be the part of your credit sales and when we calculate the sales revenue using the credit sales, it has increased the operating profit whereas there is no cash inflow. So to, to rectify this, we need to subtract this that is increase in the current assets that is increase in the trade receivable is subtracted here. Now what else we have decrease in the current liabilities. For decrease in the current liabilities, we have decrease in accrued expenses. Accrued expenses at 31st December 2018 was $3,400 and the accrued expenses for 31st December 2019 was $1,100 which is a decrease of $2,300. The decrease in liability means that we have paid this liability. So when there is a decrease in the current liability, there will be outflow of cash as we pay this current liability. Hence. We subtract the decrease in the current liability to get the cash from operation. Now let's calculate the cash from operation. We'll start from the profit from operation which we calculated in the bit B of the question which was $5,400. Then what we do, we'll add the depreciation which was calculated in the first working notes as $99,750. We subtract the profit on the disposal of assets which was calculated in the second working notes as $1,300. Decrease in inventory which was calculated in the third working notes will be added as $9,950. Increase in the trade receivable which was calculated in the fourth working notes will be subtracted as $10,800. Increase in the trade payable which was calculated in the fifth working notes will be added as $1,500. Decrease in the accrued expenses which was calculated in the sixth working notes will be subtracted as $2,300. When we add and subtract, we will get the total as $102,200 as cash from operation. Next, we have to prepare an extract of statement of cash flow for the year ended 31st December 2019 and we have to show the net cash from or used in first operating activity. For this, we will start with the net cash from operation which we calculated as $102,200. After this, we will subtract the tax paid. For this, we will take the tax paid. The opening balance of accrued tax balance will be the balance from 31st December 2018. It will be the opening balance on 1st January 2019. And this is the outstanding balance of tax which have been brought forward from 2018 as $5,200 which was mentioned in the additional information. Further it was given that the tax charges which was for the year was $3,100 and in the end of the year that is at the end of 31st December 2019 there was still outstanding tax charges which have to be paid and this was the closing accrued tax balance. As this was not paid there will be no outflow of cash hence we will subtract this so the total cash which was paid for tax was $5,200 how do we get this we will take $5,200 plus $3,100 minus $3,100 we will get the balance as $5,200 which is the cash outflow as we have paid this for tax and the outflow should be subtracted hence we have subtracted $5,200 here then next we have the interest paid. For interest paid again, the opening accrued interest that is the outstanding interest which has been bought forward from 31st December 2018 is nil. And then the interest which was charged for the year was $4,800. And the outstanding interest still which was pending to be paid and this was the interest accrued 
on 31st December 2019 was $2,600. As we have not paid this, there will be no outflow of cash for this. So we'll subtract this and we'll get the interest paid in cash for the year as $2,200. And as this is an outflow, this have to be subtracted. Again, we'll subtract $2,200. And when we take $102,200 and subtract $5,200 as well as $2,200, we will get the net cash from operating activity as $94,800. Next, we have cash received from financing activities. For this, we have the loan which we have received as $80,000 and then we have the dividend which we have calculated in the bid B of the question and the dividend is paid hence it is an outflow of cash so it will be minus $24,000 so the net cash from the financing activity will be $56,000. Furthermore, we have additional information which states that during a director's meet in April 2020, one of the directors said we have to make our shareholders happy. Even though the bank overdraft had increased since 31st December 2019, we still have to pay the cash dividends for 2020 to our shareholders. All the directors agreed with this view. In the EP of the question, we have to discuss whether or not it is appropriate for PPLC to pay out the cash dividend to the shareholders in 2020 and we have to justify our answer. What I suggest is that it is not appropriate for PPLC to pay out the cash dividend to the shareholders in 2020. No doubt the payment of cash dividend will strengthen the value of the shares because the payment of constant dividends will increase the value of shares. However, it will lead to a much worst position of liquidity for PPLC because if we see on th 31st December 2019 the cash balance was nil and we already have a bank overdraft of 8500 as well as a bank loan of $80,000 and still the cash balance was nil and if they pay the dividend they pay it from the retained earning of the previous year but still there will be a cash outflow and if PPLC is not earning a good profit in 2020 and if we remember from bid B they are making a loss in the year 31st December 2019. So if furthermore in 2020 they are not earning good profit then if they pay the cash dividend the liquidity position will be much worse and it may lead to insolvency. So instead of paying the dividend in the form of cash they can pay it in the form of bonus shares so with the issue of bonus shares the directors will still get the dividend in the form of shares however there will be no cash outflow as there is no cash dividends so with this we have completed this question thanks for watching my videos and have a great life